In this video, we'll be taking a look at three horror-themed DBP wads for you to experience on Halloween. So without further ado, let's begin. I think John Carmack once said that Doom 3 is what he had originally envisioned for the original Doom. It may not be everybody's favorite installment in the franchise, but there's no denying that it had a brilliant, spine-tingling atmosphere. So it raises the question, what if we took Doom 3's horror atmosphere and merged it with Doom 2's fast-paced FPS gameplay? We don't have to wonder any longer because DBP28 Fear and Loathing does exactly that. This one has 10 levels, custom textures, sounds, monsters, and weapons. If you're sold on the WAD, I recommend you go and play Fear and Loathing now. If not, here's a brief review to help you make up your mind. DBP28 comes with an ominous vibe right from the get-go at the splash screen, reminiscent of the Doom 3 main menu. But that's not the only Doom 3 element present in the WAD. It uses Doom 3's monsters, weapons, textures, and tries to capture the game's survival horror atmosphere. The mappers have done a great job at creating an ominous atmosphere by using ambient sound effects, doomy midis, dark lighting, and careful detailing. The tech bases look abandoned and it really feels like the demons have taken over. The wand raises your curiosity, rewards your exploration, then punishes you for being curious. The first half of the WAD is where the survival horror elements are strongest. The maps early on almost feel claustrophobic and suffocating. You'll feel a tinge of freedom and relief when you finally make it outside on map 4's exit. While the later levels feature bigger arenas and more fast-paced Doom action, the highlight of the WAD for me was map 3, Bridges by Ilya Lazarev. The darkness, flickering lights, dark wind... An overall atmosphere was at its best here in my opinion. It's a very short level unfortunately and I wish the authors would have explored this kind of level design some more within the WAD. Overall, Fear and Loathing offers something unique with its concept and atmosphere that you probably won't find anywhere else. From blood pumping fights to spooky sights, DBP40 Funnel Kick Apparitions has it all. This set of 8 maps is outfitted with a carnival slash circus theme. Due to the absence of custom monsters to accompany the theme, I used the mod Bloom to play through the wad. You must be at least this tall to ride. Alright, let's see if Doom Guy is tall enough. Yes, but barely. From start to finish, all the maps are consistent in wearing the carnival gimmick. Balloons, clowns, circus acts, amusement rides, and even games of skill. The midis sounds like twisted carnival music. Like a clown twisting balloons, turning them into beasts. The wad messes with you every now and then. Nothing serious, just silly tricks. It doesn't want to brutally challenge you as much as it just wants to play with you. Have a little fun. Or at least, that's what I felt. But I can't say the same about playing the wad with Bloom's bestiary. About that, has nobody ever felt like making a Halloween monster pack for Doom? All those de-hacked Christmas monsters but not a single imp that looks like a clown? Or a carved pumpkin for a cacodemon? I'd say all the levels were fun, but visually map 6, Welcome to the Show by Fryuko, was the best looking one. I felt like the urban setting captures a bit of the spirit of Halloween. And the map is detailed and decorated quite nicely. Signs, posters, and carnival decorations litter the streets. The roads, which have patches of damaged asphalt with a bit of grass growing in its place. Also, I can't lie, I enjoyed the Skeleton Boys act. <laughs> Overall, the water isn't so much spooky as it is vibrant and fun. It doesn't try to scare you, but rather hopes you'll find joy in playing it. In other words, your smile is Funnel Cake Apparition's greatest prize. So buckle up, it's gonna be a wild ride. In space, no one can hear you scream and this couldn't ring more true in DBP17 alone. This 10 level wand features custom textures, sound effects, midis, weapons, and monsters, all wrapped in an alien's theme. This would be a great introductory map if the wand actually played like a survival horror game from then on. But alone is more action rather than suspenseful and ominous, but that doesn't mean that it's not scary. It tries to catch you off guard and scare you often with its monster placement and dark lighting. The demons have been reskinned to fit the color scheme, but the xenomorphs are the real stars of the roster. Face huggers are fast and slippery when you see their eggs run in the other direction because one may not be an issue, but ten or more are very deadly. Xenomorph warriors blend in with the environment, lurking in the shadows. They will come at you from an angle, dodging your shots. You'll usually be able to tell if they're around by their hives or nest. 
Going in to take them out is always a bad decision. I enjoyed Map 5 because it features sections where you need biohazard suits to breathe outside the facility, but Map 7, Alone in the Dark by Hardcore Gamer was the most memorable. Bloodied floors and walls, flickering lights, dimly lit corridors, xenomorphs stalking you in the dark. It captures the feeling of being on your own, but not alone. It's what I imagine the rest of the WAD would be like after map 1. I'm guessing the narrative of the WAD is you're a space marine left for dead on this xenomorph-infested planet. You fight your way through hordes of aliens to find a way to escape. Then map 9 ends with you getting on a space shuttle, and map 10 is a credits level titled Cryogenic Sleep. So the story ends just like the first two movies ended. This is Mutant Mods, last survivor of DBP-17, signing off.